pointed out losing territory is one thing and the ability to the attacks is another. I asked him about his peace for detention from its losses. He's an analyst at the Tony Blair Faith Foundation Center on Religion and Geopolitics. Uh, I, th I, th I don't think that the group would be trying to distract or use it as a diversion tactic. I think ISIS very much takes these kind of uh, battlefield setbacks in its stride and uses it to reinforce its ideology of being part of a, a select chosen few. So I think they, they very much turn it on its head and make it work for themselves. Is there a shift in strategy? I, th I think there, there may be indications of that with the recent attacks in, in Baghdad, but I, I suppose if we, if we look over a longer period, ISIS has been continuing to gain ground and influence extremist groups in a number of new territories. In the last 12 months, we've seen uh, beyond Syria and Iraq, we've seen Indonesia, Belgium, France, um, attacks, regular attacks in Nigeria, uh, and they've all been attributed to ISIS and its affiliates. So the fact that they're losing ground is really not making a difference when it comes to these attacks. They're still getting the resources, they're still finding people to recruit, and these attacks are continuing. Absolutely. We're, we're still seeing this toxic Salafi jihadi ideology manifest itself in a number of parts of the world, and that goes beyond ISIS. We can see uh, affiliates of al-Qaeda, such as al-Shabaab, which have been very, very devastating in their attacks in sub-Saharan Africa. Mubarak's military battles are one thing, but battles for hearts and mind are another. More than one in five Syrians say they support ISIL. How can that battle be won by those fighting ISIL? I think in order to answer that question, the global attention really needs to shift to understanding the ideology that drives groups like ISIS, Al-Qaeda. We, we, we can sit here and accuse Islam, but it's particular strands that very, very many of the Muslims around the world, the 1.6 peace-loving Muslims around the world, um, that rely on that religion. But groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda will pick on elements of these religions, they will manipulate them, they will politicize them in order to serve their own purposes. Globally, we must have a greater understanding of this Salafi jihadi ideology, which uh, takes advantage of innocent Muslims and manipulates beliefs that many Muslims hold dear. So how do we do that? Um, I mean, you mentioned hearts and minds. That, that is one approach. But the first step lies very much with identifying what we're up against. If this is, like the Center on Religion and Geopolitics, research has suggested a global Salafi jihadi ideology that manipulates and preys on religion, then we must have a global consensus on that. Only then can we take steps um, to address the issue. And this is very much a global issue that requires a global response. All right, we'll leave it at that. Mubariz Ahmed, thank you so much, sir, for your insight. Thank you for having me. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.